Three reasons why you should vote for President Trump 2024. Now first, I had to research and see what do Americans look at historically for qualifications of a good president. What I found was, and this is not in any particular order, Americans mostly care about economy, healthcare, and safety. By safety, I mean borders, and I mean law enforcement, things of that sort. Well, let's start with economy. President Trump had the best economy in U.S. history. Before the coronavirus spread from China across the globe, President Trump helped America build its strongest economy in history. During Trump's presidency, he gained 7 million new jobs, more than three times government experts' projections. Also, middle-class family income increased nearly $6,000, more than five times the gains during the entire previous administration. Lastly, and there's so much to note here, he did more in four years than most do in a lifetime. But lastly, the unemployment rate reached 3.5%, which is the lowest in half a century, as in 50 years. All right, well, let's talk about healthcare. He had the best healthcare access and affordability ever. As far as healthcare, President Trump eliminated the Obamacare individual mandate, a financial relief to low and middle income households that made up nearly 80% of the families who paid the penalty for not wanting to purchase health insurance. Another thing he did was offered association health plans, which allow employers to pool together and offer more affordable, quality health coverage to their employees at up to 30% lower costs. That's incredible. And here's another one that no one ever likes to talk about. He lowered drug prices for the first time in 51 years. Yeah, it took 51 years to lower pharmaceutical drugs for people. 51. He was the only one to do it in 51 years years. Again, his accolades far surpass what I'm even mentioning. These are just minor highlights, and I emphasis minor. There's so much. Lastly, President Trump's administration created the safest nation and therefore the safest globe this world has ever seen. How did I come to that conclusion, you ask? I'll get to the tip of the iceberg on that one. But before I do, let's talk about how he did it. President Trump rebuilt the United States military after eight years of decline and neglect under the previous administration. He revitalized our defense, industrial, base, secured the largest pay raise for our troops in a decade, and created the sixth branch of armed forces, the United States Space Force. He completely rebuilt the United States military with over $2.2 trillion in defense spending, including $738 billion for 2020, secured three pay raises for our service members and their families, including the largest raise in a decade. I mean, these are just minor things. He cares about our military. But here's the most important thing. Listen to this. President Trump also became the first American leader since Ronald Reagan not to start a war. Incredible, right? Absolutely incredible. Can't say the same today. Robot Biden. I mean, Obama Biden. You know, it's Obama in his ear. Anyway. And as for the border, President Trump and his administration built over 400 miles of the world's most robust an advanced border wall. Illegal crossings have plummeted over 87% where the wall has been constructed. One more thing, he deployed nearly 5,000 troops to the southern border. In addition, Mexico deployed tens of thousands of their own soldiers and National Guardsmen to secure their side of the US-Mexico border. That's just a few things. Again, to a list of many, 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 many things in favor of none other than the American people. Don't you find it odd how borders are racist, yet your car has locks on it? Your front door has a lock on it. Any business you go to has locks on its front doors. You know why? Because it's trying to protect the things within there. If that's not enough for you, I got a couple clips you can watch. So, let's take a peek. Yeah, so I learned about roaches. I learned about kids jumping on my lap. And I've loved kids jumping on my lap. Yes, you are. Biceps. <laughs> <laughs> His biceps are big as my calves. Look at this. <laughs> there, there's a man. I hope we're on the same side. He's Russian. I don't care who he is. He's got some real biceps. We call them guns. <laughs>
Uh, Mr. President, thank you. At the end of such a momentous event, the word thank you seems kind of inadequate. On the steps we've taken, he said, and I quote, the combination of private enterprise and government working together has been really successful. He went on to say, all the way through the supply chain, there's a lot of innovation. Because of the actions we've taken, things have begun to change. End of quote. In the past three weeks, the number of containers sitting on docks, we're going to seize their yachts, their luxury homes, and other ill-begotten gains of Putin's kleptocracy. Kleptocracy, the, klep the guys who are the kleptocracies. <laughs> Mr. Trump's plane flying over the Pacific Air Show in Huntington Beach before delivering the convention's keynote address Friday afternoon. We're thrilled to be here with the conservative patriots who are leading the charge to take back this state from the radical left lunatics. We would win California in a general election if they didn't have a rigged voting system. We have to get rid of this mail-in ballot stuff. Our country is going to hell. Our country is being destroyed. Together we will take on the ultra-left-wing liars, losers, creeps, perverts, and freaks who are devouring the future of this state like a swarm of locusts. Now I would like you to compare. Who do you think is a greater leader? How might I be wrong with the data? Let's take a look. Recall President Trump's presidency and the situations he dealt with compared to President Biden. Right. What alternative conclusions could we draw? Let me ask you this. Did you feel more safe within our country's future and existence more now or then four, five, six, seven years ago? Exactly. And what's missing within our country more now today than it was? What was that? Right. American pride. The type of pride that unites each other. It doesn't break each other down. Now trust me, I'm an expert. Got a story for you. Bet you're wondering, who am I? Well, let's get into the story. What if I told you you were going to hell for eternity, but I knew a way to save you and actually go to heaven instead? What if I told you all you have to do is repent of your sins, call on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Then, therefore, Jesus and his death and sacrifice on the cross would also become your testimony to all and write your name in the book of life, and your once damned soul to hell would now go to paradise with God and Jesus and all the rest who did so in heaven once your time on earth had come to an end okay now let's say I knew you were going to hell and instead decided not to help you from going there didn't explain it to you didn't tell you that you could be saved from it now how good of a man would I be for that yeah exactly do you see the correlation here do you really believe that we're supposed to live in hell on earth and let our government just take away all our freedoms all of our rights everything that people have fought and died for so many people have fought and died for that we will never never know, never meet, and died years before our existence just to stand on the freedoms that we have today. Now, I hate to say it, I've always been right about this situation, and I'm not going to ask for an apology. I just want you to understand something. Here's another example of our country in a whole that it is in right now. Here's the comfort zone. Too many people are complying with the government orders that they don't even follow themselves. Too afraid to change the tide and are now at risk of losing every freedom many have fought and died for. Many of which you will never know. Now here's the trigger. COVID hits, the world stops, and panic arises. Getting the jab or losing your job. Well, what happened to freedom of choice? Now, the crisis became the solution sold by many, but we'll call it the vaccine. There's a reason why people actually died. It clotted their blood, blocking blood flow, and eventually killing them. The one shot that was supposed to save them from COVID and the effects actually made it worse. Why? To depopulate the world and to establish elites as rulers, the ones who mock God and want less of you and more of them or actually less of you because they want more for them. How do we recover from this? Knowing the solution they offered is absolute poison, we now have to realize which ruler would protect us from our freedom of choice. I mean, President Trump and all his accolades, <laughs> there's so many. It's just so many and all of it is in favor for you to make your best decision. Doesn't benefit him or President Biden who, on many occasions, one in particular, where Obama had said if he could be president again, what would he do? Well, he said he would whisper into somebody's ear. Whose ear do you think he's whispering in today? I mean, to call him a president's kind of an insult, but we'll do it just for this video. But President Biden, he has put up the most gaffes in all of history. But you want the result for a better place, for a better country, freedom of choice, and a safe nation, therefore a safer world? Trump 2024, baby.